Okay, finally, um, and you got that so far, right? So you're with me so far. But all of you are thinking, well, how the hell can we produce the small communities that are the homeland of democracy? Because the prevailing paradigm in academe, and certainly in the media, is that history is linear. And everything is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger, and politics is going to become more and more and more central, where local people never make meaningful decisions, and therefore are altogether now unhappy, not satisfied, and they don't participate. Um, but that paradigm into the future um, is, is unquestioned except for a cadre of perhaps 10 or 15 percent of social scientists who I believe are on the right track. And that is that the prevailing technology of the 21st century, which is electronic technology, the computer age, the electronic highway, by the way, cliches are only cliches usually because they're true. That phenomenon is decentralist in tone, and in fact, and empirically now, it is not centralist. Most writers still think today that computer technology is dehumanizing, and that it will continue to, to, to centralize politics and life. Um, that's simply not the case. The most important invention of the, of the 20th century was the automobile, wheel transportation. That created Los Angeles. Without it, there isn't any. Um, now, you, you graduating seniors are entering a world where we have another technology that will have the, as profound or more profound implications. And remember this. I know you've got cell phones. You've been, you've been told to turn them off. I can play video poker in my bedroom in Starksboro, Vermont in three in the morning with someone from Bangkok and Sydney in New Delhi and for real money that changes hands instantaneously. I can build cars in Detroit with holographic television and, and robots from my little place in Starksboro, Vermont, from my bedroom. And the data does show that more and more people are working where they live. That's the great promise of computer electronic technology. And remember this, right now it's embryonic. You are driving down the electronic highway in a Model A Ford. And when uh, we had a Model A Ford on Charlie's uh, farm where I grew up, and just for hauling hay, uh, the person that built that, the first people that drove that truck, could never have imagined automobiles as they are today, could they? Where a, a little voice would come out and say, turn right. Give me a break. You can't imagine the technology that the computers are going to give us in the next 150 years, but I want you to try. And I think if you try, you see it leads to democracy. Not because we can vote apart from one another, but, but, but because we can live together in a place. So my final recommendation to any graduate of a college today is, is to replace the organizing principle for human life of the urban industrial revolution, which was Korea. You've got to get a job. You that my age, remember your parents saying, you got to get a job. Everything's about jobs. The depression taught them that. Forgive them. Um, oh, by the way, for the parents here, I'm not advocating that they go hippie on you and get in a tent and all that. You, you know, the money you're spending here, I'm sure they'll get jobs. But in the, uh, in the urban industrial revolution, you centered your life around your job. And if someone said, you got to go to Phoenix and run that plant out there for us, you said, well, I'm off. Jobs what? Paramount. Now, some scholars, some sociologists, some psychologists are arguing, and I agree with them, that we need to replace the concept of career with the concept of place when it comes to organizing one's life. That you stay in one place, no matter where it is. If it's a big city, decentralize the city. If that isn't small enough, decentralize the decentralization and create a neighborhood council and then empower it. But whatever it takes, stay put. 
As the poet Wendell Berry says, there's no way you can really protect the environment unless you work with the environment on a daily basis. You forget about it, and I know students here understand that. So my message to you is replace the concept of career. Make your career fit your place. And, and the technology of the next century will help you do that in ways that you um, simply can't imagine. And as I began with a poet, let me end with a poet, uh, Sir Walter Scott, <coughs> his wonderful poem, The uh, Lay of the Last Minstrel. He writes, Breathes there a man with soul so dead that never to himself hath said, This is my own, my native land, whose heart within him ne'er has burned, when home his footsteps he hath turned. Your happiness depends upon your place, not your careers. Go forth, as Amy said, and be responsible to politics and government, but start that responsibility among your neighbors first. Thank you.